In this video, I'm going to talk about topology considerations for real-time deformations. So again, this is meant to be low poly. It's meant to run in a game engine. So we won't have influence objects or any other deformers that Maya has available. We want to keep this bound to as few joints as possible to make this work. So what I'm going to show you is some topology differences and how that actually makes the deformation look. I'm going to do this while talking about an elbow, which tends to be a little bit of a problem area in CG because things tend to round out a lot. And what we want, as you can see in this image, is almost a 90 degree hang angle here on the outside and then it's folded up on the inside. So we'll let that interpenetrate on the inside and then we'll try to keep this nice and sharp on the outside here. And I'm just going to do this through looking at some topology differences. These are all bound to the exact same joint chain and I'm just going to try to step through this um, sort of in a logical way. So I'll look at this thing uh, from the top here just to get started. So I have wireframe on, sh on shaded turned on so you can see how this deformation affects the underlying mesh. And for all of these, one thing to know is what I did was I just selected the edge loop and then I bound this almost exclusively to the upper arm and I bound this loop to the elbow here. That way it basically maintains volume, things don't crush in and um, this is the result. So I'll go ahead and start demonstrating here. So you can see on this one the inside of the arm is actually okay. The interpenetration um, works fine to sort of create that fold. But the outside of the elbow here, it sort of just collapses. Everything just, that's not what an elbow needs to look like. I basically don't have enough geometry to sort of make that work. One concession you might think um, of would be, see the angle of this right here? What if this edge loop right here just went at that angle? And then you would be stiff until out here. Hopefully that makes sense. So there would be this point would be out here and so then that would maintain volume out to here and then it wouldn't crush down quite as much at the back of the elbow but that will create little weirdness other places and basically what it boils down to is two spans is not really ideal for this sort of a joint so the next step would be just add a middle span which I've done here so I'll go ahead and tweak that again the inside of the arm works well um, everything holds up in there and the elbow certainly looks better than this you can see that's definitely an improvement but this is still really soft for an elbow especially if we're talking about a human elbow if you have a stylized character it might be fine but for something like this you see the the bone actually poking out here right so this is not quite effective enough so the next logical step might be what I described on the two span solution angle this out. So now these are all radiating away from the elbow a little bit. And I don't have any span that's going directly straight back from the elbow because I want the elbow to bend across this span on the inside, but I want to maintain the volume of this on the back side of the elbow. So a way to think about this would be if you were to create a cylinder here and just orient that um, looks like down Z. Just move that into place over here. What I want this to look like is when this thing moves across the center, so it's going to rotate around here, this is where the arm is going to be because I'm going to basically maintain volume. So the outside of the arm is going to be somewhere around here, which means I want this band to be really close to that. That way, this is going to stay with the upper arm and this is all going to fold down like this. So that way, this will then create more of that 90 degree angle like this. So that's why this is angled out like that see how that works. So you can see that moves some, um, which is probably a good thing, and it does indeed create a much sharper angle. And from a distance, even though that's super sharp right there, from a distance this is actually going to read much much better than this as an elbow. So again, just as point of reference, here you go right here, really sharp, not nearly sharp enough, and this one looks much much closer to what we're trying to aim at. There are still a few little issues here, so I'll just point those out. Number one, this is really sharp back here. This is just nine, that is almost a 90 degree angle across that one um, edge loop. And on the inside, we have this sort of little bit of a problem. And again, unless you're going to see this up close, this isn't a big deal. But what happens here is since this edge loop is held on the upper arm and this is following the elbow, this one in the middle is sort of an average of those. And as this bends, you see that this collapses first and it ends up creating this little bit of a kink in. So you get this little V notch 
cut into the um, where the elbow is. And it's not a huge deal, but it's not fantastic, and it could be improved. So this last one is sort of a little bit weird looking topology wise, but this helps address those issues that I just pointed out. So the first thing is there's no extra span in the middle here, so there's nothing to collapse in to create that little V notch. And on the back of the arm, what I've done is I've expanded this. I'll just go ahead and show you this in perspective. What I've done is expanded it um, at the back so that I have a couple spans where that elbow was getting extremely sharp. And that way I can sort of make that a little bit um, a little bit more rounded off. Again I want it to stay mostly sharp like a 90 degree angle but just a little bit more softening in there. So again grab this guy and rotate that around and here you can get a sense now. See that elbow a little bit softer through here still a nice angle down in here. Uh, the inside notice it's not collapsing everything holds up fine until we get to the inner penetration which is what we want anyways that's a, a closer approximation of what it, what happens on our arms when muscles just sort of get pushed out of the way so this inner penetration looks fine and the back of the elbow looks fine so this is what I would recommend in terms of a solution for a low poly elbow something like this works pretty well and you can do lots of different variations on this but this is just a good idea to think about where you're putting in topology and exactly how it's going to work. And one last thing I want to point out is this has 136 triangles and this one has 136 triangles. So we've added zero extra geometry to this thing. All we've done is sort of redistribute that geometry to help this thing to form a little bit better. And the really cool thing is you don't have to know exactly where things are going to go. So I can just send this guy back to bind pose here and you can t tweak this geometry around. So if I decided, well, really these spans here should be moved. And what I would typically recommend is you use shift right click and slide edge. And this way with slide edge everything stays exactly on the line that it should be on. In this case my lines are really straight because I just have a cylinder. But if you've got more complex geometry uh, this will help make sure that your your form and your volume is maintained as you sh sort of shift your topology around. So I can make these sort of changes and what I'm pro what I would probably need to do is come back and just do little weight tweaks after I make those changes. So I'll go ahead and uh, rotate that now and that'll just subtly change uh, what I had set up before. So you don't have to be in and sort of ironed out completely 100% done, you can sort of tweak this stuff after the fact and then, and then go back and tweak the weights. So hopefully that's helpful.